Hello everyone, my name is Viv. I make videos about witchcraft, paganism, demonolatry, occultism, and other related topics. And today we are going to be talking about protection magic, going into correspondences, the importance of protection magic, signs that you're under a psychic attack, and ways to use protection magic, utilize it, and to prevent those things from happening. So stick around if you want to find out more about that. So the first thing I wanted to touch upon is the importance of protection magic. And not just protection magic after the fact, after something happens, after, you know, you get some harmful energy sent your way or harmful entity, but I'm talking also protection magic that's preventative, that's going to help prevent these things from happening in the first place. I think that that is super, super important as uh, alongside our spiritual hygiene, including our daily practice of meditation, if that is possible for you, or perhaps doing the LBRP often, cleansing often, protecting often. These sort of things are very, very important. Now, as practitioners, we tend to be a little bit more of a magnet for these entities and even for these energies. And so it's really important that we be diligent with our protections. And the other thing is, is you're interacting with other practitioners a lot. And while it's not super likely that you've been hexed, it is always a possibility if you've had a major falling out with another practitioner, especially if it's someone who you know is petty and maybe has questionable morals and maybe might hex or curse someone over a minor disagreement. So for those reasons, it's really important that especially as practitioners, we keep our protections up. But I mean, historically, even non-practitioners have worn charms for protection and used herbs for protection, though less so in modern times. But it really depends on the culture and on the era. Let's start by talking about some protection herbs. I always find that thorny plants are really good for protection. So rose bushes with their thorns, thistle, anything that's thorny I think is going to be a good plant for protection because if you think about it, that's what those thorns there are for, they're to protect the plant. So when you think about the nature of the plant, that's already a protective aspect. And if you see me looking down, it's because I've written down some notes. You can also use cloves, you can use cinnamon. Cinnamon is a bark, so again, it's very protective. You can use juniper. I love juniper. I have, um, it probably won't focus, but I have a juniper bundle that I use for protection and cleansing. Angelica root is great for protection. Garlic, I love using that. Anise, basil, damiana, mint, birch, oak, pine. So a lot of trees are great for protection. Rosemary, sage, Solomon seal, aloe, blackberry, daisy, dill, fennel, ginger, lavender, marigold, mugwort, rue, St. John's wort, uh, yarrow, lemon, eucalyptus, valerian root, witch hazel, a lot of roots are also great for protection. And these herbs can be taken as teas if they're safe to drink and not poisonous. And you know, you could drink that in the morning as you do a shielding meditation. We'll be talking about shielding a little bit more later on. You can dry them, add them into charm bags, dress candles with them for protective candle spells, add them into protection baths. You can do so many things with these herbs. Just really get creative with it if you can. You can make oils out of them. You can make salves, balms. So much you can do with these herbs. So you can think a lot about creative ways to use these. Next, let's talk about incenses that are great for protection. So some good incenses that you can use are dragon's blood, sandalwood, frankincense, myrrh, and any incense from the previously mentioned herbs. So you can make your own loose incense from dried herbs and burn it on a charcoal disc and that produces a lot of smoke. It's a really great way 
to make incense. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned lavender in the previously mentioned herbs. That's a good protection herb. I find especially for dream protection, I really like that. Some stones you can use if you do use stones, crystals, excuse me, in your practice are black tourmaline, obsidian, jet, uh, malachite, red jasper, quartz, especially smoky quartz. I really like smoky quartz for protection. I was having some nightmares and I believe it was another practitioner placing something upon me and so I crafted a dream protection charm bag and I used smoky quartz in it and I was really happy with the results so I, I definitely recommend using smoky quartz if you have it. And amber, garnet, and turquoise are all really good protection stones and of course there's more but I'm only listing a few. Now another thing you can consider when it comes to protection magic is different planets and there are some practitioners that associate specific planets with protection. The way I tend to do it is I look for the type of protection that I need, if that makes sense. So if I need it to be more stable or stability based, maybe a little bit more established, foundational maybe, I'll look to Saturn and more Saturnian qualities. If I want it to be maybe protection in terms of communication and having smooth communication perhaps in some way shape or form maybe i'll look at a more mercurian influence if i'm doing like return to sender super intense defense magic it doesn't even have to be return to sender but it's something that's going to give them a kick back maybe i'll look at mars and that that influence so think about the qualities of each planet and the qualities of the protection that you want and I'd recommend maybe you could incorporate the weekdays or planetary hours and kind of amp up that correspondence. Same with the protection herbs I listed earlier. Each one is going to have a slightly different method of protection. Some will be more gentle, some will just have different characteristics from others. So really look at the characteristics of your herbs is what I'd recommend. I really like uh, protection sigils. I did create my own, but it's very personal to me and I don't want to share that on camera. But you can create your own sigils. I definitely recommend Laura Tempest Zakroff's work if you want to learn about creatively creating sigils, which I found is really good. You can look into her book Sigil Witchery. I took her Sigil uh, Witchery, not Witchery, Witchery workshop not too long ago and I learned so much it completely changed the way I create sigils now. So if you want to look into more creative ways of making sigils that are very personalized to you, look into that is what I would recommend. But you can create a protection sigil. Some things you could add to it would be an eye such as the Nazar or the Eye of Horus or just a protective eye imagery. Arrows like in terms of it bouncing back from your energy or thorns or blades, anything sharp like that. Shields, walls, hammers, axes, anything that you see as protective you can add to your protection sigil and anything that you kind of that comes to mind for you because this is this can be highly personalized and it doesn't have to be like a one-size-fits-all thing. So now that we've gone over some correspondences, let's talk about signs that something's wrong, whether it's an entity or another practitioner trying to mess with your energy, or maybe you're just being bogged down by unintentionally sent harmful energy. Maybe you haven't been doing as much of your spiritual hygiene and that's when our energies get bogged down. But these are just general signs that something's up and you need a good cleansing and protection. So, bad luck. And by bad luck, I mean like just everything goes wrong. Like everything for you, it's it feels like everything for you is at the wrong time. Everything that comes into your life, it just goes wrong somehow. Like it's just everything just seems fucked and there's also there also could be a feeling sudden feeling that it, that you don't normally get of like anxiety and fear and me as someone who struggles with anxiety this is not a particular useful sign for me and also when it comes to mental health obviously that's going to be like my recommendation would be to check that and make sure 
that it's not something medical going on, right? But a lot of people, uh, a friend of mine just actually had an entity come in and really mess with them and the first thing they felt was this very depressed, low energy. So just look into that when, it, when it's accompanied by other signs like bad luck, nightmares, stuff like that, then you might want to look into why that could be. But also again, make sure you're taking care of your mental health and because that comes first trust me i'm a psychology major i know mental health is very important next is nightmares as i just sort of mentioned this has happened to me where i was getting nightmares i don't usually get nightmares in fact my dreams are normally not that vivid um, and if they are they're normally not nightmares for me personally so if you don't normally get nightmares and you suddenly start getting nightmares out of the blue you might want to look into that and so I crafted that dream protection bag that I talked about earlier and you know I recharged it about every week with a candle on my altar and left it on my altar for a bit to recharge every week and nightmares were gone and I was like ah that's really interesting so you might get that but if you're someone who already regularly gets nightmares again it's not a necessarily a sign signs tend to be accompanied by other signs so if you experience just one thing on this list but nothing else you know it might might not be a sign but this goes for like all signs and lastly fatigue again this could be a medical issue so please put i'd put medicine before magic but again, if it's accompanied with like strings of bad luck and stuff like that, then I'd look into that as well. And there's other signs I'm sure as well, but those are the main ones that came up in my research and the main ones that came to mind based on my own experiences and the experiences of other practitioners that I know as well. Now let's go over my general tips for like types of protection magic, ways you can use it, and just some important tidbits in my opinion. So number one is preventative measures are really important, which I, excuse me, I kind of touched upon earlier. So this means good spiritual hygiene and you know, this is gonna look different for different practitioners. For some people it may look like a daily meditation practice. For some people it might look like a daily LBRP ritual, especially if you're a ceremonial magician or some other kind of cleansing, banishing ritual. And for some people it might look like weekly or monthly cleanses of the home and protections as well. For some of us it might look like a combination of those things or it could be something entirely different. But spiritual hygiene as a preventative measure is super, super important. In my opinion, for any practitioner, spiritual hygiene is essential. So some things you might need to protect against, just so you know. My main issues personally has been with entities. I find that most practitioners don't really harm or curse other practitioners. I just haven't, I've had like maybe one or two experiences with that, but I've had a lot more with entities and you know, just keep in mind most of them aren't really going to harm you but the ones that are a lot of them might like try to leech your energy and that is kind of harmful it's not going to be some conjuring type shit where they're throwing you on the walls and making you throw up blood and crawling everywhere um <laughs> but they might you know drain your energy or just make your home very unpleasant to be in and so what i would say is that that's kind of a really important thing to learn about even if you're not big into spirit work i think it's good to learn about these types of attacks and how to ward against them and also how to banish them if they happen and you know you don't have to be super well versed in spirit work it's just good to take preventative measures to ward your space against them before they come in so that's really important and sometimes you might be warding against other practitioners trying to get through your space I know um, most of the time you're not, if you think you're hexed, you're probably not, but you might be. Or you might be dealing with a more predatory person who doesn't really understand boundaries, who slithers their way through, tries to slither their way through people's wards, tries to get in your dreams, tries to do these things. I have 
witnessed that type of behavior happen. Unfortunately, in every community there are some some awful people. So in terms of what we've talked about so far, it's really important to not only ward your property, but also yourself. So one thing that I do is a shielding meditation in the mornings uh, as part of my sort of spiritual practice. So there's different ways you can do it, different ways that work for different people. You can visualize a shield around you, a wall, a ball of light. You can imagine uh, or visualize different elements like earth, air, fire, water protecting you thorny brambles it's just a visualization of a protective shield around you and you can add more stuff to it like spikes that make any harmful energy people send you go back and one thing i also do is i visualize the inside of this sort of shield all the of this wall being very pleasant and representing that more pleasant that more positive energy being kept in in my space and that harmful energy being pushed out and away from me. So I definitely recommend doing shielding meditations, LBRP I already mentioned. Any kind of protective rituals are great as a daily practice and I'd also recommend if you do the shielding to check in with it throughout the day if you can and try to build it back up. Um, you could carry protection oil with you and anoint yourself with it. Anything like that is really great. You can carry protection sigil with you wear protection charms such as the Nazar, which despite what a lot of internet kids will tell you is not a closed practice. I am half Turkish. I grew up in Turkey and Azerbaijan for a good amount of my childhood and it is not closed so don't worry about that. If you do want to support like Middle Eastern and Mediterranean people and North African people and in and, and our businesses you can, you can choose to buy from a Middle Eastern and North African or Mediterranean owned business but to be honest we don't really care that much and also there's tons of other cultures that use it like it's not exclusive to us so you know it's like it's not a big deal. You can use you can also wear charms with the symbols I mentioned earlier you can wear charms with the stones I mentioned earlier. You can even make a little, like you can get a little necklace that's like a vial or something that you can open and put protective herbs in it or eggshell powder and wear that. Anything like that I think is a great protection charm that you can use. You can carry a protection charm bag with you. Really get creative. There's so much you can do with that. And lastly, cleansing and protecting showers or baths. What I like to do is I like to use my shower for cleansing and then do like a shielding or some or put some protection oil on my body afterwards and that's that's really nice. Some books that I referenced that I would recommend for protection magic are The Witch's Shield by Christopher Penzak, Protection and Reversal Magic by Jason Miller, and Modern Witch by Devin Hunter because that has like different categories of types of spells and one of them is protection magic and it has some really great correspondences, incense blends, spells, stuff like that. So so all of those are really great and you should check them out and I did reference those books in kind of writing the outline for this video. So check them out if you would like. I and and I also wanted to say that I'm not trying to fearmonger. You're not likely to get hexed. You're not super likely to face like entities a lot that are leeching energy or anything like that but these are just things that you should prevent anyway even if they're unlikely kind of like wearing a seat belt you know likelihood of you getting into a car crash higher than you being hexed but still pretty low so we wear seat belts to protect against that regardless of how low that risk is so think of it like that it's like strapping on a seat belt and of course, you know, we have, we, we want to learn about ways we can deal with these things if something slips through our wards and manages to get through anything like that. We want to make sure that that's something we can deal with effectively and stay safe as practitioners. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you either learned something new or just enjoyed watching. And thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Blessed be. Bye.